Continue. <sighs> Let's continue. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. A good Muslim woman wears a hijab. First thing I want to make clear is that a Muslim woman who doesn't wear the hijab, that doesn't mean that she's not a good Muslim. The reason that I step forward is because that means that this woman has taken on the challenge of going out every single day wearing a headscarf and wearing the proper clothing. When they go outside wearing the hijab, everyone that looks at them knows they're a Muslim. It's an extremely, extremely, extremely difficult task that neither me or you will ever um, understand. But I have an extreme amount of respect for any woman who wears the hijab properly. Yeah, of course, I agree with you 100%, you know. I look to her, the Quran, which is our book, and the Sunnah of the Prophet, which is like the way the Prophet lived, peace be upon him. And what does it say about the, the, the hijab, you know? Hijab is something that's ordained for women in the Quran, you know? Can the disagree a step forward? I mean, even the one... Dude, American Muslims are so funny, because even the one out of the two conservative Muslims that stepped forward was like, yeah, you know, a, a good Muslim woman can also not wear the hijab, and that's fine. Much, much more understanding and open-minded than, like, Muslims anywhere else, for the record. Okay? Like, you're, of course, going to get... You're, of course, going to get fucking uh, uh, dudes who are uh, omega conservative. You know what I mean? But American Islam is very different. So I think that one of the main reasons why I disagreed is because of the statement, a good Muslim woman. And I think that you can be a bad Muslim woman as well and wear the hijab. And then also the hijab is not just limited to the headscarf. It's how you dress and how you carry yourself as well. I was going to say, so actually I should give a question for both of you then. Let's say you meet a Muslim woman, you know, you marry her, she's wearing a hijab. But one day she says like, hey, you know, um, I, I don't feel like maybe I want to wear a hijab anymore. I guess like, what are your thoughts to be on that and on her decision for doing that? It's about finding out why they were wearing the hijab in the first place. Like, was it forced upon them by their parents? Or was this something that they came to the conclusion them themselves that, oh, you know what, I believe in Islam and I believe it is said in the Qur'an about wearing the hijab. Where do you see in the Qur'an that it requires hijab? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَبْلُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِيَتُهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ Okay, bro, holy shit. God damn, God damn, bro. Just spitting, dude. Islam weeb. I mean, yeah. Okay. For first of all, mo most motherfuckers are 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 forced to be Islam weebs. Okay. You either don't know anything, or you're like at this level of knowledge. Because you know school. So the, here the word khimar, it doesn't use the exact word hijab, but the word khimar means headscarf. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess for me in how I read the Quran and yeah. the translation that I have, the word isn't required, it should, that women should cover their heads and cover their chests. And so that's, that's why I hesitate with saying that it's, it's an obligation um, because it's more of a, I would say, should isn't must. So personally, I guess I just took the prompt to literally, I mean, I consider myself a good Muslim, alhamdulillah, but um, I don't wear the hijab, obviously. Even if the Quran doesn't specifically say that this is required, the interpretation of the Quran has said that it is required, and I do believe that. I know it seems kind of contradicting that I'm a conservative what? Muslim and I don't wear the hijab. I just, I don't think I'm ready to kind of wear the hijab yet? I want to wear the hijab. I need to wear the hijab. Acting on homosexuality is a sin. That is the what? Yo, I'm not gonna lie. It's giving why I left the, it, why I left the religion in a few years, okay? Why are you conservative then? I'm just saying. It's giving why I left Islam, like Islamophobia in a few years, okay?
Um, I believe that acting on homosexuality is a sin, if, especially like if you were expressing sexual desire, because that should take place between a man and a woman under the sanction of marriage. So that is the reason why I do feel as though it is a sin. And it's uh, pretty clear in the put and Allah's Mata'ala. Bro, that's, what is happening, dude? What is, what's, what's going on? She's a liberal Muslim, but she's like homosexuality, acting on homosexuality is a sin, but that's Ben Shapiro. Like, that's literally Ben Shapiro, who would by no means be considered a, a, uh, a liberal. That makes no sense. Why would she be a liberal if she says acting on homosexuality is a sin? Ben Shapiro says that too. He's like, the gays are fine, but acting out on your gay desires makes you an ungodly person. God says, Do you guys prefer men over women when he's talking to the people of Lut? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, he says that one of the, the biggest problems for the Ummah is the sin of Lut, or the people of Lut. Again, we could just all agree, you know, this is not our personal opinion or anything. It doesn't, in the end of the day, when it comes to religion, our personal opinion doesn't matter, right? It does not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is what God ordained for us, you know, this is the, the natural way of humans. Once we start diving in and wanting whatever we want, it just, where, where does it end at that point? Yeah. When is it gonna, is it gonna come to incest next? For instance, in America or in the West, homosexuality 30 hmm. years ago wasn't accepted, or 40, 50 years ago, but now it's acceptable. This is the liberal idea, right? The, the subjective morality, it just shifts. Exactly. It shifts based on the time. We don't shift in, in our religion. My question for liberal Muslims would be, who dictates objective morality? Islam, as God tells us in the Quran, is, is, a, is a religion in the middle. So it has some aspects that you have to believe in from God and some things that are a little bit more leeway for you. But you have to understand which ones are, which ones are which. I love when, I love that his, his analysis, this is such a perfect video for Americans to recognize that like conservatives are just conservative everywhere. Okay. Like, I've heard this exact same argument from conservative Christians, including Antonin Scalia. You know what I mean? He just said the exact same shit. Uh, may I start? What is this? You tried. Yeah. Sorry, my fault. That had nothing to do with it. What's going on? Hazan tall as hell. Yes, bro. You tall as shit. Sir. Nigga like six four and that nigga be wearing like, like, Hazal, one of these dresses, he wears shoes with like heels. Like when we were at the, uh, we went to the club, that nigga had, he, he would tell her, I'm sorry, I got heels on. Like he would have like some shoe with like some shit in the back. I did, I was wearing, listen man, he's right. I gotta, I gotta go with the heels sometimes for the drip. It is what it is. For the record, I was wearing the exact same fucking shoes that Curtis was wearing, twinsies, and he also had flared pants just like I did. He also had bell-bottom <coughs> pants just like I did. Also twinsies. Um, Kind of gay? Bro, you don't understand, okay? If my fit, if I'm pulling a fit off and it looks like, it looks like I'm, I'm smoking big doinks, dude, fat doinks and Amish, all the better. Okay, you understand? I don't give a fuck. Seems haram to me, astaghfirullah. Anyway. You hear me? It's true though. I was wearing the I, I was wearing the classic fucking the uh the fuck what is it called? It's like the the YSL boots with the buckles. Anyway, let's continue. Um, yeah, I don't believe that acting on um, homosexuality um, is a sin at all. Um, there's so much to 
get into. In the story of Prophet Lut itself, you see that, that they weren't condemned because they, the people of Prophet Lut were coming to, to his house to um, have sex with the men who were disguised as angels, but for, you can look at it as a condemnation of, of rape and, and, and abuse itself and mistreatment of um, strangers. And the Quran verse that you um, cited as well, within that verse, um, Allah uses the prefix al, which is means the, and there's um, interpretations that exist that say that specifically is talking about those men specifically who leave those women specifically. So meaning that those men who did that had wives that they left to go rape these, or try to attempt to rape these um, guests in an attempt um, to um, bring humiliation upon the prophet and to, um, uh, to um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Basically, there's different interpretations of the story of Prophet Lut. One interpretation is that it's about homosexuality, and there are other interpretations throughout history that says it wasn't about homosexuality, but for some reason the interpretation that it is condemning homosexuality is the dominant narrative, and I think that narrative seriously needs to be contended with, um, because we're saying that you know being homosexual, being homosexual or being bisexual or being anything other than heterosexual is a sin, but Allah creates you like that. Allah creates people who are intersex, like intersex people exist in this world. And so I think there's a lot of different interpretations out there about the story of Prophet Lut, and I think the central, um, the central point in it is um, contending with the fact that people use sex as a weapon, um, a weapon for domination, a um, weapon for humiliation, that's a real issue. And being homosexual, being something that you were naturally created, isn't. My experience being a queer Muslim woman in America has been beautiful. Alhamdulillah, I've met and have been a part of a beautiful uh, Muslim community that is a mix of queer Muslims and not. Uh, I don't think I've ever experienced backlash, at least to my face, <laughs> for, for being queer and Muslim. Mostly um, questions or curiosity, but it hasn't ever been anything that felt like hurtful or unsafe. So there's a couple of different points that you said that I want to uh, rebuttal and respond to. Um, so the first one being that you said being homosexual, being bisexual, all of those things is a sin. First of all, that's incorrect. Being any of those things in itself is not a sin. So that's why when the Prophet is acting on homosexuality, that is the sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. He does not burden a soul. Okay, bro, he's just flexing at this point, dude. We get it, dog. You fucking memorize the Quran in Arabic, okay? God damn. Holy shit, dude. Just so much knowledge. Just learn. Dude, honestly, like, dedicate a little bit of time to anime, bro. That's what I got for you, okay? God does not burden any soul with more than it can bear. Each gains whatever good it has done and suffers its bad. Lord, do not take us to task if we forget or make mistakes. Lord, do not burden us as you burdened those before us. Lord, do not burden us with more than we have strength to bear. Pardon us, forgive us, and have mercy on us. You are our protector, so help us against the disbelievers. Soul with anything more than it can, it can take. As a Muslim, you believe that, like you just said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us all, and he created homosexual people with those people with those tendencies for a reason but at the same time this whole life is a test right yep. and for the person who has those tendencies then that's an extremely difficult test that they're gonna have to go on with for the rest How of was that being nerd he's just extremely knowledgeable about his book yeah that's fuck you just described being a nerd and then you said how is being a nerd being a nerd yeah Bro, you can't repeat the definition of the word and be like, how is that the definition? What the fuck? Their lives. And but that's an assumption that that is the only test. What if the test is living in a world that hates you, that thinks that you cannot act on a desire of love, of consensual love, but still being um, committed to Allah? What if that's the test itself? That, that is, that's part and of that's it. what I think is the yeah. test. And, that's, I would say and that's, that's an interpretation out there that we're not talking about. I have a question. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I wrecked them by the way like the top of the hour wrecks you if you're not subscribed 
for five dollars or for free at the top of the fucking hour. Now, of course, like I said, there are methods to avoid the top of the hour. Okay. Subscribing is one of those methods for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. That's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is by getting gifted a sub. If you're lucky, here's the three minute ad break now. I would just also like to add the Quran also kind of is about the nature, right? The nature of life and like. Tamana, and so thank you for the tank of the sub. Homosexuality, not homosexuality, acting upon homosexuality goes against the nature of what, why we were born. Um, yeah, and so we but were. We were she's like, <laughs> she's like, I don't like the hijab stuff. But all the other stuff, all the most conservative interpretations, I'm on board with. Because, you know, they don't actually impact me that way. Tamana, thank you for the tank of the subs. And No Brain Octane, thank you for the five of the subs. Live 15 people in no longer see the ads. We were born, we were, sorry, we were kind of like made in order to procreate, right? We need to like... You know, but we there's need people to, who can't procreate, though. That's the way of life. But, but I, I would disagree that the, that the purpose of being with someone is to procreate because in the Quran, Allah... <sighs> Sometimes, you guys, I can't... Why do I need haters when this is my fandom, dude? Why? Why do I need haters when I got fucking... Shiny silver box, thank you for the five of the subs. Allah says that Allah creates mates for us so that we can find love, tranquility, and peace. And I think a lot of the reason why um, a lot of people think that um, acting upon homosexuality is a sin is because of hadith. And in, the, in those small numbers of hadith that are like unambiguously correct, there is no mention of homosexuality in those hadith. So, Read Homosexuality in Islam by okay. Dr. Siraj al Um He talks about this extensively. Tom, thank you for the five get the subs. This. These are both two contemporary scholars talking about this. These are minority scholars in the way that... Why is and this that's only, fine. Yeah, no, why is this an issue only now, but not in all of this time of Islam? It has which always been an issue. No, this is not. Issue. sure it hasn't. The, the climate we live in nowadays, the People liberal mindset... People have been queer since the beginning of time. Exactly, they have. That's yeah, so they have, they have No one's denying that. That is hilarious. That big homie said that queerness was never an issue. That's, her, that's the point. Yes, there were gay Muslims, okay? And, like, nobody gave a shit, dog. Unironically, a lot of Muslims hold on to an interpretation of Islam as uh, proximity from, like, the Western mindset, you know, for understandable reasons as a consequence of like never ending war between the Christian world and the Muslim world. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, contemporary examples as well. And yet one of the things that they fucking never understand is that fundamentally the homophobia part unironically came from the West. Like it's, it's a product of, of Christianity, the Catholic church in particular that, criminalized homosexuality which is hilarious so like they don't even realize that they are cucked to a western understanding obviously not the modern western interpretation no it being in the quran doesn't change anything okay it being in the quran doesn't change anything it's purely interpretation okay you're fucking silly you're a silly bitch if you think like oh, no, it's in the quran shut up it's in the Quran in the same way that it's in the Bible. As a matter of fact, there's less in the fucking Quran. The entire point of it unironically comes from not punishing it in any meaningful capacity for generations. The Ottoman Empire maintained the fucking Islamic Caliphate. And in the 18th century, during the Tanzimat era, during reformations, they decriminalized homosexuality and it wasn't even fucking illegal. Being gay was not illegal in the broader Islamic world. And the Ottoman Empire decriminalized it before the West did. So this notion that, uh, you know, this notion that like our interpretation of, 
uh, our interpretation of like fucking homosexuality and its uh, and its consequences or whatever is just it's it's a more modern approach. This is so frustrating to watch as a Muslim. It just shows how stupid old interpretations are, especially when a lot of them are vague. The Quran says nothing about trans people, but scholars just decide it's unnatural as an extension of homosexuality. Yeah. And people have acted upon that. There's poetry. And There's erotic homosexual that's a sin, that's poetry. A sin. If you look at every other religion, that's a sin in every religion. No, it's not. It like, actually honestly, is. It's not up to me for it to interpret. That's why... Of that's Allah 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 Allah. What do you mean it's not up to me to interpret? Everything is up to interpretation. That is like the fundamental problem with religion. What the fuck? When he says it's not up to me to interpret, he's basically saying... It's up to my imam that interpreted it for me, I guess. You know what I mean? It's up to another religious scholar that interpreted it for me. And that person is always, always motivated by their own personal, uh, you know, dog in the fight, I guess. So it's really silly when people say it's not subject to interpretation. That's insane. Of course it is. That's literally every fucking religion. Kind of at the heart of the entire thing. But yeah, the only thing the only thing we do know is that the the one thing what isn't isn't he right? It's a sin according to some religions, but at the same time it's okay and not a bad thing. Sins are based. No, the point is uh it's app it's application and its interpretation for the longest time was not the way that we see it now. And for a lot of conservative Muslims, especially ones that live in the West or ones that even live uh, back home, they see Islam as a way to not be uh, corrupted by Western propaganda. Like the more Muslim you are or the more conservative your interpretation of Islam is, the more proximity that you have to to Western, uh, Western Christianity or like, you know, liberal sin, I guess. I don't know. The, the imperialist, uh, uh, the attitude, the elitist... Uh, the elitist, liberal, imperialist, Western fucking uh, uh, life of sin. Okay? They wear it as a badge of honor almost. That's why understanding that is really important because that is the reason why so many fucking reactionary uh, theocratic autocracies develop in, uh, in, in these countries that are destroyed by Western forces because it's seen as like... A, it's seen as like an emancipatory force. It's seen as uh, it being, uh, it's seen as is basically uh, your your marker, your badge of honor, and your proximity from the Western invaders. Okay, that's how it works. A lot of people in the West do not understand that. A lot of people in the West don't understand that. But even then, even then, <sighs> the irony, of course, is that um, uh, the irony, of course, is that some of those interpretations do actually come from um, Western control. And Western, you don't know what you're talking about. I go by Matt. There is no way that this motherfucker just said to me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Lamau, I'm trolling. Oh, my fucking Lord, dude. I thought Matt was coming in here to be like, listen. 
my friends, <laughs> let me tell you about the fucking, let me tell you about submitting yourself to Allah, okay, and the freedom that comes from that. Hopefully you will see the light one day. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, my name is Matt. <laughs> but we oh, envy Minkum. You look up to the people with knowledge. You look up to the people who have dedicated their lives to interpreting this in and the past fourteen hundred years. I have. That's not, what I'm saying. I can't. You can't ignore all the scholars, the scholars of the fourteen hundred years. I'm not ignoring them, but it's you can't just say they're the only ones who are correct. I, I just not, told you two contemporary just one, scholars two, who have alternatives. Two compared to thousands. And there's way more who are also thinking about this. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I really appreciate it. I know you're all very passionate about this topic, <laughs> but I think there's no good, not going to be a middle ground, which is okay. Yeah, yeah, I think the point is just to still have a conversation, and I appreciate that you guys are still listening to each other and talking, but we have to move on to the next front. Yeah. The other side taints the image of Islam. Why didn't you do this, Morgan? You would have fucking killed. I think that the reason why I stepped forward is because I feel like a lot of conservative Muslims, as a Muslim revert, um, have very strong cultural beliefs. Um, that can be very intimidating for somebody who is new to the religion. Palestinian Muslim here, I rate your submission to Allah B- minus at best. <laughs> audit, audit my way. Um, and it kind of discounts like who I am <laughs> and my own deen. Um, so that's why I think that I feel that way, just because of the interactions that I've had with like born Muslims. Yeah, I, I love that point because, uh, for me personally, people who revert we, call, we say revert obviously because we believe that every Muslim is uh, every person is born Muslim, but then they get changed their creed by their parents, right? People nowadays mm -hmm. have some weird thing like, oh, if I was born Muslim, I'm, like they think they're better and they treat them rudely. And this is not the way of a Muslim, right? The Muslim we accept everyone as they come to the religion, you know. I was originally born into Christianity, and then I went on to college to study religious oh. studies. And at that time is whenever I found peace with Islam. Oh, okay. Um, and so I decided to revert. I think the reason why I consider myself to be a liberal Muslim versus conservative is because I am a revert. And I know that I have so much more to learn, um, and I'm open to that. I also believe that within Islam, you have free will and free choice to make um, the correct decision. And so I find a lot of compassion for people in that way because I did live life for many years before Islam. People are so, so worried about cancel culture. People are so worried about <laughs> what everyone else thinks. People are so worried about being accepted by society. But who cares as a Muslim? Muslims say you don't convert, you revert. He already described it. What do you need? He literally perfectly described it. It's a belief that everyone is born Muslim. So you're just reverting back to Islam when you find the true way, okay? Islam, the, in the way that it was at least taught to me, okay, and probably a lot of other Muslims, is the, the finalized version, okay? Like, Islam recognizes the two prior Abrahamic religions that came before it. It recognizes Judaism. It recognizes Christianity. It recognizes Jesus Christ, but not as the son of, uh, you know, God or God itself, but it basically recognizes them as prophets. And then the, the last version, the most updated version of the religion is Islam. And therefore, everyone is technically, even if they're Jewish or, or you know, anything else, they're technically Muslim. They just don't know it. Okay. And that the idea is that they will, they will revert one day. Okay. Find the glory of the, uh, find the light of Allah. They'll say the Shahada. They'll say, I think I butchered that a little bit. And then you say that, and that's the Shahada, and then you become Muslim, okay? And, and then you have reverted, okay? I've done this before. I've, I've, <laughs> I've gotten really, I, I got a lot of uh, Gen Net points, okay? Um, this is what the queen did. Yeah, right before she passed, she said it. She said the Shahada. Why are people saying Froga? Is she Muslim or something? Yes. Um. Jordan Peterson with Matt Dillahunty said everyone is religious. Conservatives are the same everywhere. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's it. That's just like. That's the basic understanding.
And unlike the other religions, like there is a code of conduct in Islam as well. Um, there's some like there's some cool uh, concepts as well, like uh, Ramadan and the way that it is sold and uh, explained to people, at least according to how I learned it, was about everyone undergoing mutual struggle for an entire month so that they can. Uh, so that they can appreciate uh, those who are less fortunate. That's why Muslims around the world will fast from sun up to sundown. Won't even drink water from sun up to sundown. Like, and, and then um, zakat is another uh, important pillar in Islam, which is unlike tithing. Okay, directly giving back to your immediate community. There's like a big. <coughs> you take a percentage of your wealth, a percentage of your profits, and distribute it back to your immediate community. Um, those, like when you give, no, in tithing, you give it to the church. In Islam, under zakat, you give it directly to your community. You give it directly to the poor. Um, so there are there are some cool components within Islam, and then of course, uh, you know, uh, the the final pillar which is being a fifth column invader in the Western world, inshallah, and bringing it down from within through uh, all aspects. One, by making uh, conservatives believe that Islam, uh, and truly recognize that Islam is the, is the final and most important way to, uh, to destroy uh, the, the liberal de degenerate way of living. And then also doing fifth column, uh, you know, I mean, fifth column style invasion in the way that I'm doing it by being a liberal degenerate pervert, you know, tackling all avenues and all angles, uh, ultimately to destroy the West from within, obviously. Yeah. Stop. People don't know you're joking. Yeah. It's our responsibility to care about, only care about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks and not care about what anyone else thinks. Okay, so I guess why I disagreed with the prompt is because I feel... True, this jihad is depicted here. The main character, SpongeBob, lives inside a giant pineapple. How do you think he acquired that house? Through jihad. True. Well, I mean, even jihad itself is not... Uh, the the Western liberal interpretation of jihad is like seen as a, a negative thing when it's supposed to just be a, a lifelong struggle. Okay. Um, so ironically, this meme is closer to jihad than the Western understanding of jihad, but we're not even going to get into that. Okay. That's a. Uh, yeah. The West thinks jihad translates to terrorism. Yes. Can we please take a second to understand that all Abrahamic religions are related? Even Orthodox Jewish women don't wear hijabs, but they follow the same logic. Yeah. Orthodox Jewish women also don't show their hair, and they wear wigs instead. Um, a lot of it is supposed to also revolve around... I mean, there's like so much uh, bastardization that has happened over many centuries, but a lot of it is supposed to revolve around being humble, being modest, okay? It's supposed to be about modesty. That's why technically it's a sin, if I'm not mistaken, under uh, Islamic guidance uh, for men to wear gold jewelry. You know, men can't wear gold jewelry. You're supposed to present a, a uh, you know, you're supposed to present yourself in a modest way. Notice how the guy said only good Muslim women wear hijab, but he has a fade haircut, meaning he doesn't keep hijab. Wait, you can't have a fade? I, I didn't know that. We were taught that gold just makes you feminine, and that's why it's haram. That's so funny, because it's not, it's not even because it's feminine. But I guess that's, that would also make sense. But
Please speak to Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farooq. He's based in California. No, man. No, because like, look, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like a, a good Muslim. Okay. I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to some like TikTok imam. Okay. It's like, I'm not going to talk to like a, like a Christian uh, pastor too. I am by no means good enough in my opinion to, to even counter uh, religious propaganda. Okay. I'll be honest. I'm more of a, uh, you know, let, uh, let live, uh, kind of person. Okay. I feel Islam is just, Islam is way stronger to be kind of tainted by a group <coughs> within it. You know, um, I don't, I may not agree with everything that, uh, liberal Muslims think or, or view, but that doesn't mean I feel like they are like this big negative thing on Islam because I just don't feel like Islam can be affected by it. Yeah, I, I agree that in the fact that Islam itself can't be. What I, what I, the reason I agreed is because the perception of Islam, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what's being affected. Um, I, I disagree with that. I don't think that's true. I don't think having those different ide ideologies really taint either side because it's not like someone's going to see an idea, like for example, like you might not agree with this, but I support gay rights, right? And I'm Muslim. No one's looking at me and be like, oh, now all oh, Muslims support gay rights. I'm like, no, it's not true. It's just my personal preference. And that's why I kind of disagree with both of you guys. When you guys say personal opinion doesn't matter in religion, uh, I feel like it does at the end of the day because religion is about who you are too. Personal opinion is okay. On like, there's still motherfuckers like this. Is a liberal Muslim is an oxymoron. No, it's not, you fucking idiot. No. Just like there are liberal Christians out there, there are liberal Muslims as well. You've just been conditioned into thinking that like all Muslims are conservative. I'm willing to bet those conservative Muslims are still more liberal, more progressive than white evangelical Protestants across the board. And that's not just me saying it. There's also evidence to show that. If you look at the Pew Center uh, studies conducted on the matter, white evangelical Protestants are a specific sect of Christianity, okay? But if you look at all Muslims across the board, which make up only 1% of the population here in America, by the way, it's not like a gigantic population to begin with. But when you look at Muslims in America, they are significantly more, uh, significantly more progressive. I mean, look at Congress. Some of the most progressive congresspersons in the United States of America Congress are fucking Muslim. One of them is a hijab-wearing Somali woman, okay? Ilhan Omar. Pro-trans rights, the mo one of the most progressive congresspersons in American history. You know? Rashida Tlaib is another great example. Until it goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said or what the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one's saying your opinion doesn't matter. Everybody's opinion matters. But in relation to Islam, your opinion isn't going to change the ruling. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that, yeah. yeah. But the ruling itself comes from people's opinions. Interpretation. You realize that, right? Like jurists, like that is what you do with the law. You interpret the law and you make a ruling from it's it based on that. It's important to kind of like, it's important to note that you know, people who kind of interpreted um, the Quran, like you're saying, they're not just like normal people like me and you. But they They've are kind normal. of like, <laughs> no, they are, but like those are like scholars who kind of, like you said, dedicated their life to kind of studying the Quran. Of course. And I think those people are also biased, like everyone, right? Like everyone has their. It, I don't think know, in the case those, of Quran that can be possible. It is possible because we're humans. All humans are biased and subjective because the fact that we're human, we have a different experience. I'm going to interpret something or look at something completely different than another human being is because that's the nature of our existence. It's subjective. Just, just to make it clear, just to make it clear, this religion is done. It, it has been perfected as Allah tells us in the Quran. It's not like these scholars are just coming in and changing something new. This is something that we get it from a source. We always have to go to the higher truth. 
the higher truth is the Prophet and, and, the, and what the companions learn from the Prophet, right? Because if we're just going to go, then yes, exactly your point, you know, because humans are subjective on that bias, you know, right? But we get it from the best source, which is our Prophet, right? If we don't follow the Prophet, who are we going to follow? It's acceptable for a Muslim man to have more than one wife. I guess for me, I think monogamy is not for everyone. <laughs> and so I think Muslim men, Muslim women can have uh, more than one partner. Um, if it's She hit it with a polycule. What the fuck? I don't think everyone else feels that way. I don't think I don't think anyone else. I, I don't think everyone else that came in there had the same take. Consensual. Allah, God tells us in the Quran that you can marry up to up to four, but the the precaution is that you give maintain equity between them. And if you can't, then you have to stick to one. You mentioned that uh, men <laughs> and women. You know, this is the difference, right? Because only men in this way. A man can marry up to four because think of this situation. Say for instance, he had more than one wife. Say for instance, four wives, right? And he gets one of them pregnant. Right? Everyone's going to know who the, who the husband is and who the father is. If a woman has more than one husband, someone gets her pregnant, everyone's going to know who the father is. That's not the exact reason, but I'm saying just, just an example, just to think about it, you know? And in, in the end of the day, this is because Allah. Wow. Flawless thinking, I think. Yeah. Fucking, he, he just laid it down, dude. I mean, no counter to that. Checkmate, atheist. That told us the way. We live in a vastly different time. Um, we view women differently in this world. Just because that is what the Quran said in that context doesn't mean that we can't interpret differently now. Okay, maybe I'm the old fashioned one because I always believe uh, love is, I mean, I believe marriage is always like a love marriage. I don't think you can love four people at the same time. That's just my personal opinion. If you do get married, get married to, for the, to the person that you want to be for the rest of your life and the person you know you share love with, not someone you just get married because you have you know, the authority to marry up to four people, so. You could have a love marriage, but you can also have an institution of marriage. And I also think that that's what Islam um, kind of bases marriage around as well, right? Because even the model modeled after the <coughs> prophet began to him, when it came to him having four wives, it was based off of like, actually like merging tribes together. Um, uh, political reasons and also someone was a widow so with that being said i think that it's just different and i think that that's one of the topics that we kind of have to seek the wisdom behind um before we just make it about like today's times yeah can men marry four wives like four women yes but you can't i mean you can't be unjust yeah, you can't be just I, with all the, the four the, of them. The four wives have to agree to it too. It exactly. Be, yeah. Yeah. If exactly, you want to marry someone exactly. else, a lot of so, a lot of women themselves don't even want. Like they don't yeah, want. Yeah. They're yeah. not okay with that. So like, yeah, you can do it, but you will never be able to do it the right way. So don't do it. You know. Christianity deserves the same scrutiny as Islam. Everyone's gonna get up there. Wait, what? Yeah, I think that Islam is very scrutinized in Western. What the fuck? That's crazy. I was surprised about the conservative Muslims on that. Media specifically uh, for their practices, um, because if you are uh, following the word by text, you know, a lot of it doesn't align with what Western values hold. Islam has always been a target for people on the Western side, people around the world. Um, and I think Christianity has always been seen as kind of just like this top of the level religion it's like you know you're a christian you're a good person you can't do no wrong yeah i think all religions need scrutiny um i think any religion can be taken to extremes um you cannot understand certain things and so do things that are harmful to, to others um in terms of christian history you had the crusades and islamic history you also had um colonialism as well um so yeah every every religion needs to be scrutinized we can't just follow blindly Yeah, I think the question was hard for me to answer because I don't believe that any re religion really needs scrutiny. Um, I think that for me as a born Christian, I can understand why Christianity and Islam are like kind of like looked at kind of differently just based on like rituals and like um, the way that it's expressed out into the world. Um, but I guess the question kind of just like caught me up with the scrutiny part. Like what exactly are we scrutinizing and why? Uh, I agree. There's no, there's no, uh, there shouldn't be any scrutiny on any religion as because 
That's an insane take, man. Why the fuck would there... What? Hello? What? No scrutiny for any religion? Religious institutions should be scrutinized, not the religious belief itself. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. When I say religion should be scrutinized, I'm talking about religious institutions. I'm not ever talking about fucking like... Actually, even your own beliefs should be scrutinized. It should be an endless... You should be endlessly thinking about, uh, you know, critically thinking about the way you... The way your own personal faith is. I mean, I don't know. How else, how else will you uh, figure out that, that it's the right way? Bro, you wouldn't keep the same energy if they asked him about the Crusades? Bro, wouldn't keep the same energy if they asked him about the Crusades? <laughs> Why do I say this? Because Allah tells us in the Quran. When he gave the, the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talking to the, because who were the people in Mecca? They were the, they were pagans, right? He told them, don't, don't uh, attack their gods. Don't say anything bad to their gods. And also when, and Allah tells us, God tells us, uh, when we're talking to Ahlul Kitab, meaning the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, we t speak in a nice way. Yeah, I, I just don't like how Islam gets. Why are you surprised by that? Islam word is absolute and never wrong in their eyes. Bro, that, that's, this is a funny take, man. Oh, shit. It's treated worldwide in the modern sense. I, I think we're always like perceived as the bad guy. The bad guy. It's always us, you know, it's always, you know, uh, attack this, Islam did, <laughs> or, you know, you live in an Islamic country, the violence, stuff like that. So I, I definitely think it's unfair how we're always like the scapegoat for religions. I grew up in a more dominant white suburb in Illinois. Uh, I suffered heavy racism. Hey, yo, my man Zane grew up in Naperville, dog. That's my dude right there. Every day, I like school him. and elementary school. You know, the, the original remarks, you know, terrorist, go back to your country, all that stuff. Growing up as a kid, I was religious. Uh, but then as I got to high school and college and started forming my own thoughts, I kind of went away from Islam. I kind of explored other things. But then the last like three, uh, three to four years, I started reading more about Islam. I started practicing more because I finally had my own like, freedom to actually practice it and not have my dad or my parents like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. So I definitely felt more like comfortable practicing on my own. The Quran must be reinterpreted for the 21st century. Um, well, I feel like this is kind of like the crux of what I've been saying this whole time. Um, you always need to reinterpret the Qur'an. Um, whoever is looking at the Qur'an, whoever is reading it, needs to interpret it, needs to understand what Allah is telling that person. All the information, everything that we're learning is about getting us closer to a just future. And in the time of the Prophet, slavery was well and alive. <laughs> the Qur'an never outright abolished slavery. But people, through their interpretation, decided that the Qur'an is leading us to a future where slavery shouldn't be allowed because it's unjust. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think. The Quran as a text is a holy text that should never be changed or obviously rewritten. Like that's that's you know, off the table. Uh, but I think interpretation, kind of like we talked about the whole time, matters. I've consulted with different like mosque leaders, different people who actually study Islam, and not once that there was like a big overlap because they have their own interpretation of what the Quran is into the modern world. Um, so I just I just think in general there definitely should be a more modern interpretation. Uh, the first thing is so we as Muslims believe that. Obviously the Qur'an is the word of God and no one is disagreeing with the fact that society has changed. Do you believe that Allah knows the seen and the unseen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was going to happen in the future. He knew what was going to happen to society. And when revealing the Qur'an, the Qur'an is timeless. Any reinterpretation of the Qur'an I believe is uh, incorrect because then what would differ the Qur'an from the Bible? So, so should slavery still be a thing? No, but <laughs> go ahead. Okay, the slavery is a whole other topic. Yes. Slavery in the time of the Prophet was not the same as the trends, uh, whatever. The, the just one the act of owning another Africa. human being. That's a whole other thing. They, they were basically just a servant. They could buy their own freedom. They, could, they had rights. They weren't treated like an animal. 
like how, as we see in, in our history in America, how it was, you know? This is not what it was. Going back to the actual prompt, the, the, the Quran is, is, is a rahmah in the, in the people. It's a, it's a mercy for the humans Allah gave us to, right? The Quran is the words of Allah, right, of God. In the simplest form, I just believe that the Quran is like a sacred text, and sacred text as a whole just should not be touched. When I think about reinterpretations, I almost think about like amendments in a way. If we believe that the Prophet peace. Listen, bro, conservatives, okay? Are you really a conservative if you're not out there defending slavery to a certain degree? You know what I mean? Whether it's historic or contemporary slavery. Are you really a conservative? If you don't debate, Lord, about the efficacy of slavery, the ethics of slavery. Huh? He said, it's heritage, not hate, brother. He spent to him as the last and final messenger, then whatever he was, was revealed to him, it, it is that. You can't reinterpret everything. Because the second you open up one thing for reinterpretation, you're opening up the whole religion for reinterpretation. It's not opening up the whole religion. The religion itself the is, is the devotion religion. to Allah alone. That is what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. That Islam yeah. equals devotion to a religion. To Islam equals devotion to Allah alone. True! I mean, it wasn't like awful. It, it, it actually wasn't as awful as I thought it was going to be. It, the, the title is like super clickbait, obviously. Uh, and it made me feel like it was going to be fucking wild, but it wasn't wild. There's a new Kanye interview with Gavin McGinnis. Oh my God, he's hitting every fucking lame-o, dude. Luckily, uh, Nick Fuentes got a new hoodie, so that's cool. I guess they heard, uh, they heard us talking shit about his fucking... Uh, ugly ass smelly ass hoodie so they got him a new one so that's nice anyway you already know what fucking time it is dude you saw me click on it <laughs>